Guys, we got the dates for 2023 locked, maybe a couple more added. Batavia, Illinois, November 10th and 11th, and closing out the year at Cobbs in San Francisco, California, December 8th and 9th. Get all tickets at ryansickler.com. I'm excited to announce that my special Lefty Son is now available as an audio album. Go check it out everywhere you get music. I'm very excited to announce that the Honeydew video is now available on Spotify. It doesn't change anything for you at all. It's just an additional place to watch the Honeydew. Go check out the Honeydew Audio and video now available on Spotify. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. I want to thank you as I do every week. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, supporting, subscribing. If you're new here, if you've been here, I appreciate you. All right. If you're looking for more and you got to have it, man, every week I have a Patreon called the Honeydew with y'all. And it's this show with y'all. And y'all have the wildest fucking stories I've ever heard in my life. If you're new here, we have had cold cases solved. We've talked to people who've died. I've talked to a lady with multiple pussies, talked to one with multiple assholes. Okay, this episode's already demonetized just by me saying that. So go support the Patreon. It's five bucks a month. All right. You get the honey do a day early. You get it ad free at no additional cost. There's hundreds of episodes over there. It costs less than a penny for an episode. All right. If you don't like it, you unsubscribe. All right. If you do love it, you subscribe for a year, you get over a month free. If you're looking for a new podcast to listen to, go listen to my old podcast, The Crab Feast, The Crab Feast podcast I used to do with Jay Larson back in the day. I'm telling you, that library is going to do over a million downloads this year. That's fucking insane. All right. There's a hardcore audience for it. And everyone you love in podcasting is on there. Everybody. Segura, Christina, Bert, Burr, they're all there. Great stories, different stories than you've heard every, anywhere else. Um, and then if I'm in your town when you're around, come see me on the road. I will be in Salt Lake City October 27th and 28th. I'll be in Batavia, Illinois, November 10th and 11th. And I'll be closing out the year in San Francisco. I can't wait. Cobbs, December 8th and 9th. And that's it. That's the biz. You guys know what we're doing over here. We highlight the lowlights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. Very excited to have this guest on. First time here on The Honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, Troy Bob. Welcome to The Honeydew, Troy Bob. It was so hard for me to stay quiet when you were talking. Your voice is like Honeydew. As soon as you're, you're listening to The Honeydew Podcast, I got a little wet. Thank you, man. And one Thank of my multiple you. pussies. That's one of the nicest things. The one that, that, that's, that stays dry. So the that's one how you that stays know that dry. I got that yeah, one wet. I call that Fuck one yeah, sandpaper. Bro. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. No, it's great to uh, Your business be pussy? I got uh, That's I my business pussy. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's the hardest one to get wet. The hardest one. They call it the Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Um, it's uh i love getting to be a guest on someone else's it's a pantsuit it's disgusting it's you put a, it down there and it's, it's, a it's pantsuit. Just, yeah they call it south of bosnia oh um, shit but, uh, it's i have a podcast and it's great going to be on someone else's yeah so thank just you go and so talk and it's amazing thank you for having me thank you for reaching out uh you described me in a way that's become my legacy the last year or so where you were like I don't know what the guy's name is, but I want to have him on the podcast. He's no, I knew you were Troy. Troy, I Troy, said, Troy yeah. something, I, which is farther than I usually get with people I because I'll be Troy walking something. around New York and people will be like, "Hey, you're that guy who told the woman to shut the fuck up," yeah. and it just both looks like we're like, "Yeah, fuck women. We gave them the right to vote in 1920, <laughs> man." Um, and then I'm like, "Well, that's my that's that's, that's it. Your like, Bill that's, Burr that's Philly what I've got. Yeah, um, that's your Bill and, Burr Philly uh, rant. So it, was, it meant a lot that you knew the first name. Yeah, the time I said I to Brandy, I'm like, now his name's Troy. I was like. He's the guy that told that lady to fuck off, that crazy lady. And I said, you see him, he's wearing the dark shades. And I said, he looks like he's got that Richard Belzer vibe. He's got that old school 70s boom. And, and right. then then you told me that. And people have told you that. All the time. You stopped I get those, watching that's the shade. Yeah. Like, I can't wear. I wore the glasses yesterday. And like, I'm wearing a hat today. Um, but I wore the glasses and my after the show. I was I was wet and like I'm looking at the meet and greet pictures on my stories and I'm doing like the Kubrick stare. I look like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. I'm just like I have two girls in my arm. I'm like, hey, get into the picture with the goblin. Uh, so it's uh, it's it's great to just be on the other side of 
the pod because I got to interview people all the time. You got to ask yeah. questions that you don't like. It's great to be able to just Well, talk. plug, promote everything plug, and uh, anything. All my road dates. I'm on the road a lot. Um, I don't know when this is going to come out, but uh, I, you doing Wise Guys in Salt Lake? I am. So good. I was out yeah, there uh, I love Salt last Lake. month. I almost quit smoking when I was out there because the did? air was so thin. Cigarettes or weed? Uh, oh, I'm never stop smoking weed. Okay, God I can't, I got How am I going to go to sleep at night? Yeah, no exactly. Weed. That's what I'm saying. How am uh, I going to deal? Yeah, do I want food to not taste as delicious? Great. I'll stop smoking weed yesterday. Um, all my <laughs> road dates, TroyBondLive.com, vaping. That's what it was. I jewel. That's my problem. I go, I switch back and forth between acoustic and electric cigarettes. Um, and uh, when I was in <laughs> Salt Lake. and electric cigarettes. That's great. <laughs> oh, and I was in Salt Lake and like it hurt my, I, I felt it in my lungs. I was like, why is, it feels like there's like, I'm swallowing pine cones. And I'm with my opener and she's like, the air's a lot thinner up here and you've been chain smoking. And I'm like, nah, that can't be it. I'm going to keep smoking and not work on a control group. Um, so if you want to support my uh, lung cancer research, uh, come see me on the road, TroyBondLive.com. Uh, all my social media, you've probably seen me on the toilet on TikTok or Instagram, uh, Troy Bond 69, because uh, Troy Bond 1 through 68 was taken. That's the only reason I chose 69. <laughs> no, is that for real though? That's, uh, no, it was, um, it was Troy has Ebola for like 10 years. That's that was my, <laughs> that's my Twitter. It's Troy has Ebola still. But then as I started to gain more traction, people thought my last name was Hasbola. So they oh, were like, shit, they were like, Troy Hasbla. So I was like, well, I got to change. That, I, I, book I, Middle East dates I was like trying a to. They were bro. like, man, we're, <laughs> even you, you oil money pick a side. Now. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I, I'll get booked in Israel and Palestine. I don't care. Call that a two-state booking solution. I'm coming, Netanyahu. Bring hummus for everybody. Well, I want to say this because we're talking about smoking. So I ask you outside. I'm like, you know, what do you want to talk about? And you, you drop right away something that blew, blew me away. Uh <laughs> And I, I want you to say what you said, but yeah. then I want to rewind and we're going to lead up to it. All so right. say what you told me out there. I started smoking crack when I was 15. With? My uncle. Your uncle. A family member. A not, family member. Not somebody with, in with, the neighborhood. With a hell of a man. That's how I did it. With a with a hero. With a guy who knew. Was he your knew, dad's brother or mom's brother? My dad's brother. All right. Um, yeah. Let's go back to the okay. beginning. Where <laughs> Where are you from originally? I uh, I was born in a town called Waterbury, Connecticut. Okay. Uh, and I grew up in Naugatuck, which is right next to Waterbury. Um, and, uh, and are you an only child? Do you I have, have siblings? two younger siblings. Okay. Um, one is an ultimate fighter. R is that real? He really Hell is. Yeah. yeah. Um, and is he, he doing well? He just had his uh, second uh, knockout. He knocked out somebody for the second time All last right. week. Uh, he was covered, he posted an Instagram story covered in blood. And I was like, are you okay? And he was like, it's not my blood. Hell and I was yeah. like, that's the coolest shit that ever, is, man. Like, he actually came to a show with me a couple of weeks ago and there was a guy in the front row. <laughs> Listen, at our job, if yeah. we're ever covered in blood and we say, <laughs> it ain't my blood, it's not cool about that. <laughs> a woman threw ashes at me a couple of weeks ago. What? She threw her dead you, mother's no, ashes at me. No, it's dude. on my Instagram. No. Uh, she, was in the, she was drunk and heckling during an 11 o'clock show. And then I was like, what is your problem? And then she was like, my mother died a couple of weeks ago and uh, I'm here because uh, I told her I was going to sprinkle our ashes everywhere I, everywhere I had fun. And then she walks up to the state, pulls out a Ziploc bag of her mother, a gram of mom. No, at this point, it's, it's like no security done helped. anything. I like Isn't literally look into the camera and go, why is nobody stopping no this? One. And like I get off and like, that's going to be a great clip. I'm like, I'm covered in dead bitch right now. <laughs> I'm just like, it was like, it was like, it was like the, the South Tower just collapsed. But instead, it was just the love of your mother. I'm covered in from head to toe. I farted earlier and I like felt like learning how to drive. Um, and it was that that's uh, once you once you have something like that and that's a good day at work uh, uh, compared to like what my brother does. Uh, where he gets in the ring and fights everybody, which I look at it exhausting. But he came to a comedy show one night where I did like five shows and 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 in a, on a Saturday, you know, that's what we do. And he was like, "I can't do what you do, man." And I only do what I do once a month, like. Uh, and so he does that. He's a fighter. And then I got one who's a in a college brother right now, brother, two younger brothers for now. Um, uh, one who's in college, uh, I think he's studying to be a therapist or okay. something. I should. Probably find that out. I talk to just send him a yeah, I need someone to, yeah. Uh, I he's like coming to my show next month and uh because I'm going to Connecticut and I was like, I don't know if I want you sitting there cross analyzing yeah, me. For real, when you're just, 19 and you're just starting to learn psychology and you're gonna legs, Yeah, pit, just be like, all right, I do remember dad doing that, but yeah. I remember the story very differently, yeah. my brother. Um so I grew up in Connecticut. Parents together. Parents are uh I mean when you grew up. When I grew up, they were together. Yeah. yeah. Um 
Uh, and what did your dad do for a living? He, uh, for a, <laughs> a <laughs> living, did, I don't know. What did your dad do to make money? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he did a lot, but he never made any. Um, my dad uh, owned a karate school. He uh, um, was a wrestler and uh, he was also a DJ. Yeah, I was saying this sounds so much. And was and I asked you to personal trainer as yeah, well. Personal yeah, personal trainer, I motivational friend, speaker. I, swear, I, I think his swear. job on Facebook. I might know your dad. You know, yeah, my, I think, yeah, we, we have the same bill. I might know I think dad. it is. Um, and uh, I grew up around that. And my dad, because he was a DJ, didn't listen to um, music in the car. We were driving to, com we were driving to wrestling gigs. He would listen to comedy albums. Just okay, full so he was sick albums, of music like, from work. Sick and he would of listen music. To and we would listen to like, you know, full length. Robin Williams or Cosby or Pryor or uh, Delirious or Raw, like, you know, the stuff that he grew up on that I'm four or five years old, probably younger than that, absorbing it as a kid. And then I start looking at the world through the lens of a comic because that's how I understand. That's how I started. I was seeing a lot of shit four or five years old, going from the karate schools to the wrestling gigs to uh, uh, all the all this eclectic stuff that my life has sort of accumulated. And now I'm listening to comedy all the time who are uh, that's how i'm understanding the world you know what i mean mm -hmm. like yeah they're uh, painting those pictures for yes. you now and you're like oh these things are all making and sense now. now yeah oh and that was illegal <laughs> oh that was right. oh, yeah all kinds of shit you start learning okay, okay and it really expedited um like the the chip in your brain that processes information for me uh like i feel like i gained consciousness at a younger age just because like i was immediately looking at things and observing them and trying to make my own conclusions or drawing my own conclusions mm -hmm. from them. Um, and then I started seeing the world through my lens. And my dad also wanted to be a comic and actor when I was, when uh, before he had me, um, and then he didn't pull out, so he couldn't. Uh, and um, that's why I became a wrestler because he's like, "Fuck it!" This probably he be, probably would have ran the light this, anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Probably would have ran the light anyway. <laughs> He had that run That's in the light ten minutes. I was, yeah, I was in line at some point. Whether you shot this low in 94 or 98, I'm coming out like a Men in Black sequel, baby. This is the 90s. Party in the city till the heat is on. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, so I uh, I always had a, oh, I had a weird upbringing. And um, when I was like 11 years old, I got into Michael Jackson. We were coming back from a karate tournament and uh, Fat by Weird Al came on. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand what, the Ain't seen you was. down Burger World lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, big man, big man. What? What? No, guys, that's all right. Thanks. Yeah. I don't want anything. Um, <laughs> ding dong, man. Ding dong. Ding dong. Yo. <laughs> like I, I didn't understand. Of, I haven't thought of that. God, forever. I haven't either. It just hit me as soon as you said it. It man, was Burger World, you down right? Yeah, yeah. Burger World in a long time, man. That, right? And then he just does the move, and then he gets. <laughs> And like, my dad was like, if you want to know why this is so funny. Okay, I've done so wait, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. You didn't get introduced to Michael Jackson. You went, no. You went reverse I went Weird Al. Yeah, like I listened to Weird Al first. And my dad was like, if you want to know why this is funny, yeah, go right, home and right. watch Michael Jackson's bad. And then I did. <laughs> and then my life got separated into two chapters. Like I was as equally obsessed with Weird Al as I was with Michael Jackson. Okay. Like, and I would go into talent shows performing as Michael Jackson. Like wig shirts you could do the dance i did the shit. dances did it all How like i started when i was 13 okay and i did it till i was like 16. did you really uh so i did it for would you make years. money at it and stuff um, like winning contest nah, or i would do uh a lot of talent shows and i put on a lot of my own concerts um you I charge, like, can you moonwalk and shit i used to be able to now like that rust really is knocked off it wasn't. I don't know who let me do it for as long as I did. Like, it's Listen, such I a, was good in socks. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> like, socks and I'm wearing like whole though. ass. My grandmother would take me to Calvin Klein to get penny loafers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, or Lord and Taylor. And yeah. I'd start to be wearing like Lord, Lord and Taylor and penny Taylor. loafers with like the ankle high socks. And I would not only <clears throat> dress like that in performance, I would go to school dressed like that. Like, no, that was my whole. That was your every day. That was my every day. That was my sense of style. And uh, my you dress like Michael Jackson. I dressed like so Michael wait, Jackson. You're, you're 10, 11, whatever. 10, what 11. year is that? This is this 2000. Is 2000. 2000. Because I grew up in the Michael Jackson right. shit. And yeah. that's the 80s. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. this is 20 some years later. It's affected you like that's, that, that you're dressing like him at school. I was, yeah. And like, this is before he died too. So like, and this was maybe 2005 is when I would say it started for me. Like right when the, 
his second trial was over. Somehow the universe had just given it to me. That's like, I remember. I was pre-trial. Were you, I were was pre-trial. you were pre-trial. You were pre-trial. So I was post. I was pre-trial, yeah, you Michael Jackson. Pre-trial, Michael. Brother. I had the Brother. zipper jacket and the glove. Brother. You motherfucker on top of the car dancing. You know what? I you never wore. Babies I never wore. Window. I had parachute pants and a I Michael Jackson jacket. Pants. Yeah. And I, my grandmother, my mom's mom got them for me. I'll never forget this. And I never fucking, I hated them. I never put them on. They're not practical, the parachute But also, in my neighborhood, if I put a Michael Jackson jacket on and I walk outside, before I walk outside, my brother's <laughs> going to beat the shit out of me. And then the rest of the neighborhood. I'm not yeah. even getting out of the house with that video. That was going to happen in my neighborhood. My fucking thing. Yeah. That was going to happen to me too when I lived in a retirement community. They're did, just going to beat your ass either did you, way. Wait, you lived in a retirement no, community? No, oh, no, God no, no. damn. I was going to say, we got a <laughs> That's lot. That's another level of the story. Where do you think the crack <laughs> was coming crack from? Take you? <laughs> it was coming from Hunter Biden, baby. Thank you. He was coming to visit Pop Pop once a week. We were getting did you wear the bags. long curly wig? I like, had what? the wig. Um... In my gloves. latter years, I had the glove. I had costume changes. I had all of it. Costume changes in school? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I would put if on, I see like, you in first period, when I see you I after would. lunch, <laughs> I, are three, you I different? I have no shirt yeah. on. I'm just going to be, like, rocking this shit. I might even have it on this pod. I might, like, have, I don't know, see how it works out. I might do this, like, halfway through. We'll just see what's going on. <laughs> this is for my heiress tour. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sweating so much that by the end of this pod, it's going to be, like, strip poker. Or I'm just going to be sitting here and be like, yeah, and this is where my dad That's stuck so his other fingers. <laughs> Um, it's the, it's the clotheslines that he didn't hit that the stuck with you the most. Changes. I had costume changes through I school. I remember my fucking lunch. You got costume bring up, changes, oh yeah, I had backup bro. blazers. I had shit oh, in my lockers. Backup blazers. I, I, oh man, I had five, like. Okay, so here's my question then. Yeah. Why do you stop? Um, what makes you go, all right, I When you're going to prom shit. and you're like with your date and you're like, where'd you get that eyeliner? Is that Maybelline? I might have to start using that on stage because like it, mine runs and yours looks great. Um, and that's I'm also smoking crack at this point too. When I retire, um, come on, there's a few layers. Am, there's, it's layered. You got to be doing one to do the other. So hold you on, I gotta say this. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. If smoking crack got you out of your Michael Jackson face, there's a silver lining. I think it kept crack. me in it for as long as I did. Oh. I don't know. What, I don't know if it got me in or it got me out. It did get me. <laughs> It did help me through the Whitney Houston phase. I will say that because when she died, I had a Whitney Houston phase. And when she died, I was like nearing the retirement of my Michael Jackson career. And I was processing her death. And then like two months later, my uncle died. And then I'm hanging up the glove. So like there's all these moving parts. And I'm on crack. (laughs) (laughs) I'm 16. I'm like, why won't anybody it help me? Like a crack and, like, it was, that I was on crack, like a crack and like I would be, I would be up. At, I don't know how my parents didn't know. I would like be coming downstairs at like three in the morning and like cleaning shit that didn't need to be cleaned and like talking about. I'm already manic as is and, oh and on God. crack. You are literally on crack. And it started because my uncle moved in with us and he's a huge Michael Jackson fan. My dad doesn't like. He hates that he unleashed the Kraken on me, right? Like <sighs> literally, he <did>. literally the <laughs> Kraken, bro. <laughs> Dude, it was. I'm sweating. I gotta give you the. I mean, here was his sales pitch. He comes up to me and he goes, "Do you want to try cocaine?" And I said, "I don't want to. I'm on. I got allergies." This is your uncle, my uncle, and you're 15. I'm 15. The first thing he offers me was oxycotton. Why though? Why? What made him come up to you and be like? "Mm, Because he was fucking cool. (laughs) No, it was. uh, I think they call it grooming. I think that's what was going on. Yeah. Um and. I had a tumultuous relationship with my dad that drove me into the arms of the cool uncle that you don't realize until years later, like, oh, that was a lot of really bad shit that actually isn't normal. But um, so he comes in, he moves in with us because he lost his house because he was a crackhead. I was going to say. Yeah. Um, and he moves into my room, which reminds me of the line from the boondocks where he's like, all the goddamn beds in this house. Why'd you have to put the possessed dude in mine? God damn it. Like, why you gotta be in my bed? That's He's how I felt in your at first. Room? He's, we're sharing a bedroom how together. How old is he? 50. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say in your 20s or 30s. No, he's 50. Me. He's 12 years older than he's my dad. He's me right now. Yeah, he's, he's you me right, right now. now. This is some real Neverland shit happening. Like, I was Macaulay Culkin in this case. <laughs> There's another, Jackson, was, there's another Michael Jackson. There's another one. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, like, and yeah. Macaulay like came out and was like, Michael never fucked me. Um, but oh, in this God case, damn. so he comes out in my room and he's like, Hey, Jake, take some of these pills. It'll be cool. You should get high. And then he's like, Do you want to try Coke? And I was like, I don't, I don't want to snort it. I don't want it to go up my nose. And he's like, We could smoke it. And it, it's better than cocaine. There's no side effects. 
and uh, it feels better than sex. And I hadn't had sex at that point, but I heard a lot of great things. So I was like, let's try it. And it was April 15th, 2011. Wow. It was the first day of my, I remember my, <laughs> I was, we were on spring break and I was supposed to be doing some report about Mesopotamia. And I remember he came home with a bag of crack. Uh, and then we went on a car ride um, and he, he was, he was hitting the pipe and I was just like trying to get in there. It was like double dutch. I was like, when are you going to, this was like the big day. I had He's it like smoking it in my right calendar, in front of you? smoking it in the car and driving. Like we're going and through driving. And driving. He, over. he went to go pick up his Oxycontin pills so he could sell them and flip them for Jesus crack. We were going Christ. to do shit. Oh, that's not even the, that's the beginning of it. Um, about a year later. Uh, so that night I come home and like he, I, I kneel down. I had like a desk that was about this height in my room and he's sitting at the desk and I kneel down in front of him and he like puts the pipe up to my lips and then I just, I, I inhale, I take it and then I'm immediately hooked. And uh, what did it feel like? Um, Is there a way to describe it? I mean, you're also 15, getting a hit of crack. Getting a hit of crack at 15. I have an addicted and personality. Had you smoked weed or anything prior to that? No, Were you was drinking? That? So nothing. the first substance the you first ever thing put in your system was, was crack? crack. Oh, Jesus and a lot Christ. of Advil PM. I started doing that when I was like 12. Yeah, that crack I did it. Yeah, you that, I was balanced. It just kept me normal. It was weird. I was just keeled. I was <laughs> even. Before a beer before or anything. I smoked crack in April. I didn't smoke weed until that. That July out of a Bud Light lime can that I tacked, did the thumbtacks mm -hmm. with. I didn't even have a lighter. I had a birthday candle and a gas stove. <laughs> so I took the birthday candle and I brought it downstairs and I was like holding my hand with it. And I'm like hitting it with the Bud Light can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Fresh Prince is on and our basement TV in the background with no sound. And I'm just like watching Will Smith do this as I'm smoking weed and I'm addicted to crack. Um, and, and about six months later, my uncle gets kicked out because he comes home and he's like, I need you to take a piss test for me. Comes and picks me up from the doctor and takes me to the doctor's office. They're like, where have you been for the last hour? You're supposed to go in that room and take a piss test. Now you got to go in that room and do a blood test. My uncle's 50 and he tries to convince me to comb my hair back put on glasses so I'll look like him and nah. go in there and take the blood test for do you, him. Do you look anything like Nothing. each other at all? I have way more teeth. <laughs> He's black. And uh, he is, my, my dad is black. Uh, and this is on my dad's side, but my uncle is my complexion. Okay, and so we kind okay. of looked alike, but I don't look 50. Like I'm a six, I'm 15. Yeah, you're a child. I'm 15, 16 you're, years old. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, so like I call my mom in the bathroom and I'm like, mom, you gotta come pick me up. Like. This is going, I don't know what to do. And like my parents didn't know. They didn't know I was on drugs. So I, I told them maybe when I was 24, because I didn't get off Coke Coke until I was three years ago. Three years ago last month was when I stopped doing, I stopped smoking crack at 18, but I still snorted a lot of blow All until right. about 24. So, holy shit. So yeah. you smoked crack for three years. I mean, three through years. your fucking. Yeah, through high oh, school. sorry, your All high, four years yeah, of high your, school. Your influential yeah. high school years. Yeah. Every day? Um, as often as I could get it. And, and uh, are you like slick, sneaking out of school to do it or anything? Or are you able to maintain like around school hours? You're good. <laughs> yeah. I was able to keep business and, and, uh, yeah. and, and, and uh, no one knows. No you don't, one You knows. don't end up smoking with friends. You don't bring anyone in. No. So um, three years secret of just you and your uncle. Well, he died a year into me smoking. Um, what? Yeah. He, when I was 16, he died. And then. While he was living with you? Uh, he got kicked out after okay. my mom found out right. that he tried to get me to do the blood testing. And then about six months after that, he died. And uh, I remember calling his dealers. What What did he die from? Was it an crack. overdose? Yeah. It he was, was diabetic and crack takes away your appetite. And he didn't, he would get high for several days and then not eat. And there was a few times where I walked into him in my room, like in a diabetic coma, essentially, just like still frozen because you're high and you're not eating and your blood sugar's low. And when he died, I blamed myself for a lot of years because I felt like, A, I got him kicked out and B, I wasn't there to save him. And that's what I think kept me on drugs for as long as I was. Um, and it wasn't until I was 18, I was working this restaurant job uh, as a busboy and I came home on my 18th birthday watching Drake host SNL and he was doing a Cat Williams impression and somewhere the chemical connection of Cat Williams drake and crack just made me be like i'm never gonna make it if i keep smoking this shit because i was doing comedy for like maybe six months at that point i okay. started when i was 17. um and then um yeah i i stopped smoking it at 18. i snorted it till i was 24 but i didn't really pick it up again till i was like 21. 
Um, and then COVID really expedited it because then we're all just home, you know, for where I, I lived with three Irish bartenders who, and so Jesus now we're all Christ. nightlife guys who are home and Joe Biden's giving us all this cocaine money. <laughs> so we're going to do some cocaine uh, or, was, or we're getting the Trump stimulus checks. Um, where he would sign them. Yeah, it's stim. so great. Send the it stimmy. To you. I yeah. got that, that yeah. blow stimmy. Yeah. Um, and uh, I got off coke through Buddhism. That's how I found out about it because I started Buddhism meditating. Buddhism right downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, it was just mindfulness. I never really learned mindfulness and meditation and learning why I'm doing something. You know, like, why, like I never, because my life just had moved so fast that I never stopped to think why something was happening and if your life is a complete roller coaster, maybe you're the common denominator and start to think why you're the common denominator. And there's good days and there's bad days. And there's, um, you know, I'm a lifelong addict, essentially. Um, I, a lot of the time it feels like I got corrupted like a, Anakin Skywalker and, and the Chancellor Palpatine. You man, know, but you like, really did crack to a kid. I did kid crack until I was a kid, man. Wild, yeah, dude. costume change. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> doom, doom, doom. <laughs> Yeah, I da, did it for, uh, da, oh, there goes my crack lighter. Da, da, da. <laughs> I still carry the blowtorches with me. <laughs> Is this the only one that I could get out there? Yeah, man, like I came on this podcast for a couple of little rocks. The bird, this is kind of like, like what the first pipe looked like. I'm not even kidding. Like the 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 thing would be out there. It's a great so, like, advertisement you smoke for it through the this, mug right now. And then there'd be a thing on top with like a, a tinfoil cover and it was like plugged. And then you okay, just, so. And then you go downstairs. You're not even smoking out of glass pipes or anything. Your uncle's got. Once he died, I did. he had his own custom. I was going to say, pipe. he had a rig or something. Yeah, he you did, can get 15% yeah. off using promo code ROCK. And you just smash somebody's car window and take it from them. Uh, he had his own custom crack pipe rig. <laughs> that was insane. Now that I'm thinking about that, that is an insane thing to have. <laughs> a he was a professional. It had, it had its own little oh, bag. Shit. It was a custom little bag. It, was like, it looked like an asthma inhaler, but made of marble. Um, and then I discovered the glass stems, the rose pipes, mm -hmm. and that's when you're really a crackhead. Okay. So he dies, and you said you reached out to his dealers because that's what I want to know. Where's a kid yes. continue to get cracked? His dealers, they came in. They, I was going out to make the drops for him when he was living for us, so I had a relationship with a lot of them. Okay, so I want to talk about that in a yeah. second too. You were going on runs with them all the time. I want to talk about some shit you saw because I know it's, oh, it's yeah. crack stories. So it's, yeah. gotta, it's not normal shit. It's and not he like, was, hey, John. I, yeah, um, it was. But wait, real quick. They're, yeah. They have they know you're a kid and they're still giving it to you. They don't care. Well, after he dies, yeah, one of them, I, 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 they came up to a, do a delivery and the guy was like, you got to stop smoking this shit, man. This is what killed your uncle, man. Anyway, $60. <laughs> and then just did the handoff. I'm like 16. I go right back inside, put on Dirty Diana, and I'm getting high. Um, That's the one you were listening to, Dirty and Diana. Did, that might have been the one yeah. that started Dirty it. Diana. And then I ended with Blame It on the Boogie. And then I'm just being like, I'm cold. Um, and So uh, he said that. You remember the guy saying that I to you? I remember him. His name was Sean. Uh, and he was scary. I had a scar like up my kidney for a while because like he he like tried to jab me with a screwdriver because my uncle shorted him like twenty three dollars. He's trying to stab you. And he like went to go stab me with the screwdriver. I don't think he meant to, but then like it just like went up my and like I I was wearing a white shirt like this, and my dad was on the front porch, and I came inside, and he's just sitting there like his son's like bleeding out the side, and he's like, "Did you take the trash out?" I'm like, "I will." So let me go patch myself up with acrylic glue. My uncle was also bisexual and uh, would go to. Uh, uh, truck stops a lot. Um, and there Can would I be, ask you this? Yes. Was he bisexual before the crack happened? <sighs> there was crack either way, brother. It just depends on... <laughs> He needed uh, that crack. He's going to go to truck I stops and get that job. He, he was... Yeah, it's going to happen. Um, my grandfather, his dad, was very religious and kicked him out for being bi. I honestly think he was gay. Um but uh, he kicked him out for that, and he he went into the arms of drugs and inevitably died because he wasn't allowed to be who he was. Never That's accepted, why right? I, I mean, like, it feels very sanctimonious. We talk about stuff like homophobia on stage, but I, I come from it thinking, well, what would have happened in my life? What would have happened in his life if he got to be the person that he was and didn't have to feel ashamed of, of who, that's because that's got to suck. Wouldn't have, you probably wouldn't have smoked I wouldn't crack have smoked at 15. Crack. I don't think that I'm there's sure a reason. I don't just know. Just a hug would have set that ship on the right course. 
Oh, Did you get one drugs, hug or bro. 10 years of crack? <laughs> yeah. You either gonna, yeah, man. It's, I'm gonna take the 10. <laughs> take I'm gonna take ten. the 10. I'm gonna take the 10 because you don't have as many nearly hug stories yeah, as you yeah, do crack yeah. stories. How many hugs landed you in a truck stop, motherfucker? How many fun, funny hug stories you got? <laughs> I've had a lot of funny hugs, but not in the ha ha way. Yeah. It's more like, oh, this is very Catholic. Stop. Truck stops and like I would be in the car. I mean, that's also a surefire way to be murdered too, you know. And I was just alone in the car while he's like doing shit with dudes in the back of their trucks. I'm just sitting no, there. No, you're wait. Yeah, you're with them for I'm that not part. In the truck, I know, with but him. you're on the. You're just oh, he like leaving the car. Here. Yeah, I'm like I'll stay here with the crack. No, every time happened about five or six times. There was just a lot of stuff like that where like- <laughs> You're sweating like a crack out. I <laughs> am, I know. I mean, I can't imagine how much of a slut I look like right now. This is probably so bad. <laughs> You've and never like, opened up like I'm gonna this I'm going to need before. a second shower. I know. Oh my God, this is so bad. This is what I look like in the Michael Jackson days. Yeah, you look good, dude. God, uh, you look rough. good, dirty Diana. I wore Diana. all black so I wouldn't sweat. And now uh. by the end of this podcast, <laughs> like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. I feel like this is all happening again. I'm being like, <laughs> Get the crack pipe, guys. Get the crack pipe. The farmer's dog was founded by two dog lovers who decided to reimagine pet food from the ground up. And in the first five years since they delivered their first meal, the response has been incredible. The farmer's dog isn't just fresh, high quality food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. This makes it easy to help your dog maintain their ideal weight, which is one of the biggest indicators of a full, healthy life. A fresh diet has been found to have all sorts of benefits from healthier coat and skin to better breath, even easier digestion. It doesn't matter if your dog is young or old. It's always the right time to begin investing in their health, helping you live more healthy, happy, and full years together. Look, I told you, we've been pumping farmers dog they're they're awesome they they tailor each you get turkey chicken i think there was a beef one uh there's so many different ones they put their dog's name on there princess lily rose here's her feeding guide right here as well everything's spelled proper look at her she's tearing this up she is tearing it up she i had to put her outside to do another ad and she's clawing at the door get 50 percent off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash honeydew. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash honeydew to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash honeydew. You don't have to be an athlete to need extra hydration throughout your day. From Zoom meetings to long travel days or fun nights out, Liquid IV makes it easy to stay hydrated. Their hydration multiplier comes in three delicious sugar-free flavors. You got white peach, green grape, and lemon lime. A proprietary zero-sugar hydration solution with no artificial sweeteners. Look, we have Liquid, Liquid IV has been running with us for a long time now. We love Liquid IV. We support Liquid IV. We all use it here at the studio. We got tons of it out there for our guests. My neighbors are always hitting me up for it. Liquid IV is also great. I'll just tell you, they send me bags of this stuff. Bags. All right. I love it. We all use it. We're out there running around. Everybody's better off with Liquid IV. One stick of Liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone with three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink. No artificial sweeteners and zero sugar plus contains eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. Grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEYDEW at checkout. That's 20% off of anything you order when you shop Better hydration today using promo code Honeydew at liquidiv.com. Now, let's get back to the do. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, God damn. Yeah, but that teaches you grit. That's yeah. why I made it in this business. Um, and I like that you talk about the highlighting the, the, the low lights because there's nothing. Whoa. Think about like the comics that you know. Most comics have had horrible things that most human beings suffering to a level could not deal with would, would ruin them would ruin them and that's why would they're do successful. what happened to your uncle right yeah exactly There's plenty of people who have been unaccepted and taken their own lives in a way whether it's immediately or slowly over time right 
And there's that's what I love about this show. I fell in love with comics all over again because it's there's no one that can come and sit in these seats and tell you shit like this. Right. 15 year old smoking crack. Like I know what happened to me at 15 and I, I'm still they they say I don't, I don't know exactly the saying, but they say if there was a circle of people and we all threw our problems in the middle, we'd all take our own yeah. shit right back. And I'm telling you, even though I know what happened to me, I ain't fucking smoking crack at 15. <sighs> Yeah, you know, it's, so it's it's you also you're mentally tough and to be able to laugh at that shit like because it's it's you either cry all the fucking time. Yeah. Or you figure out a way to be like, what? I mean, what the fuck? Yeah. We do here? And I definitely and you've turned it into a career that gives back and helps people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I do that Patreon. And when I hear some of that shit, I'm like, no, what am I bitching about? And also, like, you develop a community with those people um, because they don't – it takes one person to share that story, That's right? right? And then the rest of the people – like, people come up to me uh, – people came at the improv show I did last night, and they brought me, like – I'm a huge comic book nerd. They brought me, like, this giant Batman poster. They brought me some Wolverine Pez, and they brought me, like, a couple of Lego clone troopers. Check that Pez. And don't that, cut that up. That, don't no, cut no, it yeah, up, keep bro. that don't shit cut no. it up. It's great. <laughs> Hey, I got more of that pants candy. That. I'll take a cough drop if you got it. Something. Mm, I'm going feed it, Jerry. Got some, uh, I don't know, anybody got a Rayola or something. Yeah, come on. We used to do Smarties back Smarties. in the day. Smarties. That's, that's, you crush them up, right? Yeah, and yeah. snort them. I yeah. smoked them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you did. <laughs> right in there you with the, the big pen. Not Smarties. Yeah, it was PCP, actually, the whole time. <laughs> did you have PCP, was, too? No. I so was it just crack and mm-hmm. weed and weed? Crack. Didn't really smoke a lot of weed until. No cigarettes? I did Because then that smoke, gets expensive. I did. I still do cigarettes, um, but I started smoking cigarettes when I was like 16. Okay. Um, I tried when I was like 13, but it just made me horny. Every time I smoked, I would just get like so horny. Yeah, so yeah. phallic. And I would just be like, boy, you're going? And like, I remember I would steal my mom's cigarettes and like go upstairs and watch Planet of the Apes. And I'm like, I shouldn't be horny watching this with a cigarette hanging out of my lips. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it's the the result. There's nothing this business can do to you that life hasn't done, and that's why you look at the people who are successful in this and why they are successful. It's there ain't nobody online that can say shit worse to me than my own mother has. That, that, <laughs> there yeah. ain't nobody. And there's nobody that online that says that. more like, racial slurs got. on Call yeah, of Duty yeah, than you do, yeah, dog. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Ryan Slickler with a hard R. <laughs> Both times, and hard. not where you think it is. <laughs> All right, so. You go on runs. You sit and wait with I'm the crack the while your uncle's make, earning getting, his money. We'll he's just earning say. his money. I watched him uh, make it Do you it ever ask spoons? him about it? Do you be like, what did you just do in there? Would uh, he ever tell you? N- yeah, in great detail. Um, no. He, yeah, w- yeah, he yeah. wouldn't lie and say, I no. just went. No, no, no. I remember when he told me he was bisexual. Uh, we were at a place called Al's Hot Dogs. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> nah, I'm dude. not even kidding. It's Al's Hot Dogs in Naugatuck, Connecticut. It's still open every time I go home, which isn't often. I have to just avert my eyes because I just... I, it used to be like Vietnam. Every time I closed my eyes, I would just, I would see the hot dog. Yeah, yeah. I got a foot long that day. I don't know why no, I had to this he's day. Got the on well, he's hot dogs, wearing overalls. <laughs> when, when, and one of the straps are off. You just see nipple, and I'm about to take a bite nipple. out of a hot dog. And he's like, You knew your uncle was bisexual, right? And I'm like, Horrible oh, timing, my brother. Horrible time. Wait for the mustard to touch my lip. And then I don't think I've touched a hot dog since. And if I have, it's been feet oh, away. Um, <laughs> it's been the little tiny ones. Um, and oh, uh, yeah, I was doing the drops. I was doing, I did it all. And like, it. Uh, what do you mean? Are you driving at that point now? No, I still do- don't have my license. Okay, so you're just rolling with him. Uh, I'm, ju- I'm uh, going do down the street. you guys ever get robbed? Do you ever get attacked? Do you ever get threatened? I... Well, never physically. I got attacked at one time with a screwdriver. Right. I don't think he meant to jab me. Um, and then there was that time. There was a time where, like, I was supposed to give a guy uh, like four or five pills, and I think I gave him ten instead. And of course, he didn't turn back around, and be like, "Hey, sorry, there was a misunderstanding, yeah. fellas." I think he gave me six more than I need. <laughs> <And then, laughs> what a genuine fella! Half a dozen extra. And then my uncle was so pissed at me that um, he was like. Oh God! I, he That's held that over my like, head. Oh man! Oh my! And then so he made me Till go he to. Died, he's he like, made he me case. Like, you killed me. You killed me. That's one hundred twenty dollars. 
Um, <laughs> he made me go to school and I had to start looking for people who were going to buy them from kids, him. Kids, other kids. Who were like, I was a freshman, so I was like going to Target. like, And I grew up in the part of Connecticut that started the opioid crisis. I probably have something to do with it. I'm now, looking say, back at it. Be. I'm up there with the Sacklers. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I remember leaving one, day, one, one time. I rode my bike across town to go make a deal. Uh, as I was leaving that deal, I saw my other uncle, my mom's brother, who was a addict at the time. He no longer is. And he's alive. Shout out to my Uncle Neil. Way to go, Uncle um, Neil. And uh, he was like, hey, you know where I can get some uh, some more of those pills? And I'm like, it's the tale of two uncles. They're both drug addicts. And I'm like, I get back on do the bike. Do they know each other? They do know each other. Okay. Um, and they know that um, they know who what, what they're both up to. Like when I was, uh, when I was like 12, my uncle, my... Uh, on the other side, stole my brother's Nintendo DS that my mom got him for Christmas. It was like hidden downstairs in the basement and uh, traded it to a drug dealer uh, for heroin. And uh, my dad found out about it. And it was one of those other situations like my dad came home covered in someone else's blood because he just walked up to Michael and just pounced him, like punched him right in the face and just blood spurts everywhere. And he's like, where is it, Neil? And Neil says like, something, boom, that's it again. Where is it? And uh, to Neil's credit, and took two hits. And he's like, all right, this is the exact address. Here is where it is. Go get it. And then uh, Neil got his shit together and has been clean since then. Um, but it's 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 weird, like, because if you think about it, I've replaced one drug for another. But the one that I do now is a lot more productive and it helps people. And it helps me. Comedy is, is a lot like. Is that weed for you Cocaine. Now? No, comedy and, and cocaine, oh, comedy, I think, are very similar. Mm -hmm. um, just in the sense that uh, the release the is very short-lived. Immediate short -lived. hit. It's right it's short -lived. there. If you're it's already good, on your you know, way home. Yeah. You're, you're already on your way home. And um, it's fleeting. And then as soon as you get home and you're alone, you just want to go out and do it again. And uh, except this time, you're doing it in a way where you're developing a community it's it's two-sided i get something from my audience they get something from me and uh when it's you're, a way better heroin it's circle. way better heroin it's than way heroin. Better heroin let me circle. tell you it is way less uh i mean you on. would know you would probably have you ever sat heroin i snorted it you did i would snort it a bunch to try okay to come so let's down. let's talk real here for a minute yeah. what's a better high crack or heroin they're different highs. Because one's going up and one's taking you down, yeah, right? Yeah, one, heroin is bad because your body gets dependent on it. And you get and not really crack? sick. Um, not the same way you do with crack. You go through crack withdrawals. I would liken them to like caffeine withdrawals. If like you uh, have three cups of coffee every morning and then one day you don't. All of a sudden you start to feel those headaches. You feel everything. Heroin, you just feel sick and you know you don't need it but your body needs it because that once that goes in your your blood chemistry that's over it's it like and you don't even enjoy the act of being high you just don't enjoy uh throwing up and 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 shaking and sweating all the time uh you enjoy that a lot less than you do um but i the crack withdrawals would be so heavy that i would just try a little bit of h just to come down and okay that was maybe for about th mm, that was on and off when I was 23, I definitely snorted more than I did when I was in high school. But uh, it's. Um, Do you switch from crack to heroin? Or are you always using crack at that time? Always well? crack. And then if I could get, if the dealer had any, like a little bit of heroin, like not a lot. I mean, it's also cheap too. And uh, well, you're lucky you're clean now. This fentanyl shit is. That's you the you other would be thing dead. Too, like, You'd be dead. I remember during COVID when the fentanyl shit was really starting to spike up, especially in the city. And I got, I stopped doing blow August 22nd, 2020. Um, and that was everything. And like, I'm seeing my friends that are out partying now and I'm like, dude, you're gonna die. You're gonna die. You are going to die. This is cause like, your drug dealers don't give a shit about you. You're on their yeah, time. Yeah, you tested it. I'll test yeah, it. Yeah, 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 no, I'm cool. <laughs> I'll test I went it. to go meet up with this weed guy once and I was like, what are you doing, man? And he was like, I was like, what are you doing down in Chinatown? And he was like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to pick up some fentanyl strips. And I was like, oh, I guess I can. And I thought he was joking. But then I was like, oh, yeah, no, you're a drug dealer. And I can never buy weed from you ever again. Um, so I it. Uh, so what makes you finally tell your parents you hit rock bottom? I was drunk when I was like 23. Home you didn't even night. want to. Um, no. like you didn't have an intention to sit down and say, mom and dad, this is what's going no, on. No, because I didn't want them to feel guilty about it. But I also. Um, I have been doing some stand-up bits about it, and I knew that, I think in the back of my head, I would rather they hear it from me first rather than watch a bit and then be like, 
this was way too specific to be a joke. Like this actually happened. And I, a part of me wishes I never told them because that can't be easy for a parent to hear. Um, and they do blame themselves and, and we what are do you guilty say? people. How do you say it? Because you got to tell your mom who I you're told also her doing it with. Yeah, I told my mom. Um, I think she knew to some degree. I think my dad knew that something. He he just didn't like the relationship that him and my uncle had. The one that got me on crack. Um, and uh, I I just sort of, we were driving back from my brother's eighth grade graduation. Uh, it's like maybe 2018. And my mom said something. Her and my dad were fighting. And then, you know, like when you get older and you, your parents start revealing family secrets to you, uh, or family does, you're like, holy shit, where did that come from? And my, I was like, I don't know why dad's like that all the time. And my mom went, probably because his parents were cousins. And I was like, what? What? How old are you when you find that out? Uh, this was like maybe five years ago. Wow. No. <laughs> um, yeah. I think they were like maybe, I don't know what the level of cousins that's okay for it to be, but they were- But they, they weren't were, first cousins. They were not first. They might've been second or third. All right. um, Gatesville County, North Carolina. There's a lot of mattress hopping, a lot of family reunions, a lot of fucking happen at those family reunions. Um, and uh, why go across town when you can go across the hall? <laughs> that's my family gene pool. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> that's underneath your family I, arms. That's going right. <laughs> like where all the family members are buried in the backyard. Just so they can 69 each other in the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> we bury our relatives face oh, down. Shit. Um, oh, shit. And uh, I think after she said that, I was just kind of like, yeah, you know, I smoked crack with Vint when I was 15, right? And then um, my dad and I, because he kicked me out when What'd I was she in high say? school. Did she get pissed? Did she say I remember she her knew? being very quiet. You think it was more like- I think she knew and I just confirmed it yeah. because she definitely covered my ass once. Um, my dad found my journal and it was talking about, uh, the drugs and like, cause I would journal a lot when I was coming down and I would be very specific and he found the journal and, uh, called me downstairs, made my mom do a drug test, uh, next to me. Um, and. Did you have to pee or they take blood? It was the spit test. Oh, spit. Yeah. And I like did blow test like two nights ago. It's the same as Coke. It comes, oh. it shows up in your system as cocaine. So like. <laughs> someone was on tiktok the other day and they were like that's the cool thing about crack man it's like shows up on the drug tests and you don't know if it's cocaine or crack so if it comes up as cocaine you should be like oh sorry i smoked a little crack the other night <laughs> i didn't know it was in sorry. the blood, was in the blood. <laughs> yeah. i smoked a little crack um and it came she was like yeah there's nothing in his system he's not doing any drugs and i that might have been true i don't know how long it stays in your system for um, I do think that if she really did think I was an addict, that either one of them would have stepped in at that age and been like, hey, come on, let's come help you. Um, but, but your I, brothers aren't fucking with it or are they, they way too no, young? No, no, no. They're, no we, don't, we don't have that much of a difference. I have a brother who's two years younger than me and one who's eight uh, years okay. younger than me. So the one who's eight years younger than me was way but too young. But one two years younger than me? He never had any with attention it. with it. No, he was on the spectrum and he was really into the Beatles. So that's he was like... Uh, that was his thing. And I was a crack smoking Michael Jackson impersonator. God damn. And now he's the ultimate fighter. What a talent and show. I'm yeah, I'm in the interrogation <laughs> sauna room. It feels great. I'm del I'm, I'm sweating from parts of my tits. I don't even know much. I had. I love it. Yeah. Um, but no, I I it's easy to look back and then go, wow, how did you you know, this poor kid. I look back at it and I'm glad that it happened when it did, because I would have experimented with drugs at some point in my life at any stage it's on both sides of my family it's in my genes uh, and i would have experimented with it and i'm so glad while it may have messed up my uh life trajectory and brain chemistry i'm glad i got it out of the way at an age that seems inconsequential in comparison to if i started getting into drugs now when everything is going well mm -hmm. for me in my career you know like um because now i know the consequences of it and i've lost friends i've lost family members uh so I, do you feel like that has really set you up for life where you're like been there done that i don't even need to fuck with that again yeah and or do it, you miss it no i don't miss it i think i did the first few times i tried to get clean and that's why you end up going back but like i know i don't miss it weed smoking weed doesn't make you want to smoke you know what i mean the habit no, of smoking again and it makes back me want to uh, eat gummy bears okay. um i love weed uh and it I have a lot of chronic fatigue and thank God that chronic be helping that fatigue. <laughs> um, and so like the weed is just sort of like a blanket that's there for me. Yeah. Um, but like, I know I don't miss it because I'll get done with shows 
And I do a meet and greet after the show every time. You know, it's like you take pictures with everybody. They came to see you. You're going to show up for them. Then by the time that's over, the last thing I'm thinking is, all right, I want to go party. I'm like, no, I want to go lay in bed, eat a pint of ice cream, and then just wake up and have diarrhea tomorrow. Yeah, give me some my pizza own. or shit yeah, food. Like, I'm going to lay in bed. I'll flip through some bullshit I'll flip channels, through it. look I'm at looking, the internet, go to bed. That's exactly what I want to do. That's where I'm at. That's I where I've always been on the oh, road, though. Yeah. yeah I've, never, I've never been like the Ric Flair guy. Go out. I got to no, party with someone. No. I got it. I'm We're going okay. to the bar. Have fun. Most of America is the same. Like all of America pretty much looks exactly the same. Mm-hmm. There's like three cities I'm that like, are okay, kind of new. Your Home different. Depot looks like this. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, cool. yeah. right. Like even when I was checking in my hotel Tuesday in uh, Koreatown in uh, L.A., the guy was like, I asked the guy what a good place to eat around here, and he was like, Seven Eleven. And then I went on Google Maps, and I was like, God damn, he was not lying. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to eat around here. Korea's house got great places, I, man. Go I, get Korean I, barbecue. I couldn't read them all, any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, 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 I smoked crack instead of taking that Korean class. I wonder how things would have gone differently for me if I picked up a Korean instead oh, of the crack pipe. Shit. So what? when you finally get clean, what happens? Um, when I get clean, when I stop doing coke completely, it's August 2020. I start meditating every single day. I read so you're this mid pan, heavy pandemic, heavy pandemic. Um, I read this book by Robert Wright called "Why Buddhism Is uh, the True Religion" or something like that. One of those like aggressive titles. Um, and uh, if I, you ain't Buddhist, you ain't shit. You ain't- <laughs> I've read that one. <laughs> Larry the Camel guy yeah, wrote that one, yeah. yeah. Um, and then he also wrote uh, Metaphysics for Dummies. Yeah. <laughs> this particle's bigger than the other one. Metaphysics <laughs> for Dummies. And then you got the porn parody of that Christopher <laughs> Nolan movie called Sloppenheimer. It's gross. Slop. It's just like instead of an atomic bomb, he invents AIDS. Um, but, um, <laughs> uh, once I get, I felt clarity. Once I finally stopped doing everything because it was a time in my life where... I was I was cognizant of why I had the temptation to do what I wanted to do. And uh, I downloaded a dating app. Uh, I started going on dates. Most of them sucked, but I was clean. So I had to deal with that. And that was a level of, of uh, film that I would put on top of it. And then about three months into being clean, I got into a relationship. Uh, and that was a with big- With someone who was also clean or at least not smoking crack. She was not smoking crack. That's, that's what I was looking for in a woman. Right yeah, now. that's clean yeah, enough yeah, for me. Yeah. And she has as many teeth as she does hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is a winner right there. I need somewhere to put this ring. Yeah. Um, I don't even care if she has all 10 fingers. You can have six. Just have this one. Yeah, just you can have 10 on one just hand. I don't give one. a shit. Yeah, right there. I mean, use that for me. Uh, because I got two of them. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it it was really just about like changing who I was surrounding myself with all the time and also not uh hanging around with so many cokeheads and um because it's more or less the recovery process that kills you than the drugs itself, right? Because like you you stay up doing blow till like seven in the morning and you're going to sleep till like 5 p.m. the next day. And then you haven't eaten for two days. You're going to eat McDonald's. Then you're going to feel like shit. Then you are going to shit. Then you're going to want to do blow. And it's just that cycle that's just repeating over and over again because those are the people that I had to hang out with during a pandemic when I couldn't go outside. Um, and I was always worried that I was going to go back but luckily, I've had this great yin and yang in my life where things, when they're going really well, I'll get kicked in the balls. And it makes, it just reminds you that like Humbles nothing it. is permanent. Bring it right and back the pleasures down. we seek evaporate. And um, having this. That's the what's life. Oh, that's it's going it. good for you? Boom. Guess right what? there. I'm having a great time <laughs> okay. right here. I can't wait to get fucked in the ass by a gorilla when I leave. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever insane shit is going to happen. I'm going to have yep. like a safe hit me in the yep. head and just yep. drop me right down. Um, but like, yeah, I I feel um, I just hit three years, which I don't like look at it like, oh, I look at it like, wow, that's the longest I've ever gone in my life without doing. Every day I don't do coke is the longest I've ever gone in my life consecutively without okay. doing it. You know that's what I mean? That's great. And um, how do I feel? I feel better knowing I'm probably not going to die that way. You know, like. I would have hated to like go out like a Pulp Fiction style thing, right? You know, like the adrenaline thing and they got to stab you in the heart and then everybody being like. I you, would, well, you, uh, not that you've seen that, but you've seen people die from this. Yeah, you people watched. I loved, best friends. Um, and how, uh, how were you again when your uncle died? 16? 16. Yeah. And that doesn't scare you right then and there enough. Should have. Right? But I you're think addicted. It, so. I, think, I think it did scare me and I didn't know how else to deal with that fear. So I just went back to the drugs. I mean, that's it's masking. And it wasn't until 
I was in, uh, going into my senior year of high school where I discovered comedy uh, again, and I got really into late night TV, and I went back to watching Letterman and Conan, and um, I was working that busboy job, and I started doing comedy. And the more serious I got about comedy, uh, the less serious I got about getting high. And you have to face the same trials in life at different points in your life sometimes, right? Like getting off cocaine at 18 was the same getting off of it when I was 23. It's just, what did I do in those five years in between? I moved out to the city. I built out a career. I just lived through a pandemic. Still am living through a pandemic. And uh, I'm, I'm not the same kid in high school I was. Now I'm a kid who's been out on his own for five years. And uh, I have to face this trial again. But you, because you've already faced it, I feel like a lot of the time you run away from it because you're like, oh, I already did. I'm not ready to do this work again, man. Like, come on. And now I just, my biggest hindsight looking back on all of it is when I start to feel that thing of uncomfortableness and I don't want to face it, I just open myself up to it completely because that's the only way to really deal with it. It's like, okay, this is happening right now. Let's deal with this problem like head on, square on what's going on. Why do I feel this way? How do I not make this happen? That's How do I make myself uncomfortable again so I can continue to, to, that's the only way you develop yourself as a stronger person. I went on the dating apps when I got sober because I knew I didn't want to go on the apps. And they were going to make me social. Um, and it worked out. And um, uh, I feel lucky to have gotten out. Um, but also, if I didn't do this for a living, I would probably feel undeserving to have gotten clean. Um, Explain that. Like if you just had a, a job as a plumber. Right. If I didn't have a, yeah. You um, wouldn't feel what? You wouldn't feel like your purpose was big enough to of, of overcome that, to share or help? Inside or? of me, that's still, yeah, I okay. still have that. Like I've got to do something. Bigger. Grand. To, to I just can't to, just stop doing crack. Yeah, I can't just stop doing that's crack. I enough. have to be doing something else too. And also just to justify the shitty decisions and uh, life choices I made. I get that. If you're going from crack addict to you know, regular job. Right. It's maybe two jumps. You want to go yeah. fucking leaps and bounds. Yeah, that's what I did. Uh, and I I luckily had the career while I was getting clean and while I was on drugs. Well, what were you doing for money at that time? Were you doing odd jobs? Or are you just selling or what when are you I was, doing? When I was in high school? or Just when to, the, yeah, to get your fix and how um, are you getting this shit? That's a good question. Because the I guy's was, like, this shit's going to kill you $60. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I like. I Where was are you getting that 60 Stealing, pawning. You are? Um, yeah. A lot of stealing. Mostly stealing. From who? Stores? People? Stores? What was your parents. move? What was your move in stores? Um, How would you get out of there? I would just take some shit and, and, and walk <laughs> and the run, fuck right out. Would, yeah, I wouldn't even run out. I would just walk right out. Because I, I don't look like the kid who's going to steal. Like, I, I would be this sweaty. Um, <laughs> I hate that. Really. Get a mop on aisle six. That sweaty kid's back there looking at the peanut butter cups. <laughs> <laughs> It just keeps getting worse. <laughs> I feel like I'm being We're wrong. almost done, I promise. <laughs> no, I love it. Poor I mean, bastard. I'm just like, no, because now after this. <laughs> you look like you showered in here, dude. I did you this really morning. You look like you showered And like, I'm going in there to like hang out with the with like a CEO after this. <laughs> and like my childhood idol. Oh, you know? They're like, hey, shit. thanks for joining me on Make-A-Wish. <laughs> oh, and man, like, dude. Please take a shower. Oh, uh, <laughs> Um. Yeah, no, but uh, oh. this is it's better to it's better to be sweating and sober than to be sweating and on crack. Because like you'd be on coke doing stand up shows, and I don't know how like Pryor and Robin Williams those guys did it. Because like I'd be like six minutes through a set, being like I'm booked for an hour. Holy shit, this needs to move a lot faster. Really, like, I just want to like, like that. Yeah, because yeah, like you would do a hit, and then seven minutes later you want another hit, and I can't be like, excuse me, one second, guys. So anyway, um, and uh, I like. Being in an uncomfortable situation where like maybe you're sweating too much or you have to meet someone who is a lot higher than you on the corporate ladder. Like I remember like meeting a, a head of a, a talent division of some network and I was high. Uh, being sober and uncomfortable, not that I'm a sober person, you know, I still drink, I still smoke weed. Um, but when you're on a stimulant like that and when you're dependent on it, everything in life is way more amplified and your level of discomfort is and then you're not thinking rationally and that's why you become an addict you're just stuck and you're just like the only thing i know how to do is get high so i'm going to keep doing that and not do anything else i'm not going to learn on a trade i'm not going to sign up for itt tech fuck all that i'm gonna just get high. that's what my thought process was like i'm just going to sit here and get high until i die um and luckily sometimes you just gotta go for a walk 
Sometimes you just have to go out of, of your little box. I live in New York, so I live in a shoebox apartment. I pay way too much money for um, where I live, but I'm paying for the address. And it's because when, if I'm if I'm going stir crazy, I can just go walk outside Lower East Side of Manhattan, and then I can go walk for 20 minutes. By the time I get home, I forgot what I was even mad about. But it's something that you really have to force yourself to do and put yourself in an environment where you could... And I'm very grateful to be able to do that. A lot of people are stuck in life circumstances where they can't get out. Um, I just try to put myself in circumstances where I'm not backed into a corner. And um, it's also just wild because it's not like life led you to this path of seeking drugs for comfort or anything. This right. person came in and just gave them. That's really what it was. Yeah. You know, it's crazy to me. It's crazy to think. You know, it's, I, I mean, I'm not comparing this in any way, but it's the same way you could put religion in someone or anything yes. at that age. Like, you, you, you're you such a blank template to do whatever you want with for someone to introduce you to, not even weed. He didn't even say, hey, you want a sip of beer? He went crack, bro. Yeah. Crack. I do, I, I compare it to the religion thing, too. It's interesting you say that, because I always, Richard Dawkins had a line um, in this book I read where he's like, there's no such thing as a, Christian child. There's no such thing as a Muslim child. There's a child raised by Christian parents. There's a child raised by Muslim yeah. parents. And there's a child raised by crackhead uncles. You That's know, right. and um, a lot of the the stuff that we have is due to the circumstance that we have surrounding us, and also hindsight too. Like I didn't realize it was wrong. Right. Of course. Until years later, where you're just like, when did when did that hit you? When did it, when you really sit down? When and go, I Jesus stopped feeling Christ. guilty for him dying. Mm -hmm. uh, because for about 10 years, I definitely blamed myself for that. Why? Uh, like you I felt, felt like you could have saved my, him if you were there? You I felt mean, like or? I could have saved him. I felt like it was my fault he got kicked out. I felt like uh, because he got kicked out, he ended up getting high alone, and that's what led him to die. And I'm talking like a year ago, I stopped feeling guilty for this shit. Wow. Just because I was like, no, that wasn't right. Because I have a brother... It's about to ask if you have nieces or nephews I, or anything. That's You're starting the thing. To see like, I, ha I, I, I have... I have nieces and nephews who are around the age I was, and I got to think: Do I even would I even want to drink a beer around them? Right. The answer is no. Yeah. Because they they're gonna see that, and the, and they're gonna and and I know what's in the blood. I know what's in our family. One one drop, one little anything, and then you're gonna be screwed. So like I would I would never do that. And then once I realized that I didn't kill him, uh, everything just sort of went out of my system, and it was gone. Um, you know, you miss them. I listened to some music sometimes and i'm like man i wish you were you supposed to be here but then i'm like most of the time i'm like i'm glad you're cold in the ground because <laughs> you can't get any other people addicted to crack yeah, that's right dude really though like sometimes like people are too far gone for a change to happen there's only two ways you end up when you're on drugs and it's dead or in jail that's right uh and um or the third one is you get off them and then you end up in a pile of your own sweat <laughs> there's a quarter cup of water gonna, in my taint right now looks that like a super chair, slide bro. i know yeah you're not gonna want this at all there's a <laughs> i have my my second pussy the water <laughs> the, one, the yeah. second pussy is the, business the one? second plane oh, has hit the, the pussy one? the personal pussy the second plane is hit the pussy all right we're we're gonna this has been look this has been a fucking this fantastic was so great episode. i feel like Thank this was a therapy this. session Dude, i really got it a looks like it was i for got you. more than sweat out yeah. of my system i got a lot out i'm of gonna this. ask you this very last question yes and we're gonna plug whatever you want again and we're gonna get out of here but i told you at the beginning before we recorded advice you give to your 16 year old self and I'm interested to hear what you have to say because this shit starts for you at 15. So yeah. it's wild to you, be a year you, into this. You said mindset. something that I've been thinking about. You were like, what would you tell your 16-year-old self? Uh, probably to put down the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I've been thinking about. Um, but I think it was uh, Quinta Brunson who said, somebody asked her that question. She was like, what would you tell Listen, your... Listen, you're the most quotey former crackhead i think i've ever met in my life it's like what we're, i know yeah and me and the scarecrow from the whiz yeah um that's my there, who was my just well realizing you didn't yeah wow. wasn't a you Damn. did the whiz dude yeah because i just i really yeah i wasn't even trying to then damn i really am black um uh, i she said i wouldn't tell that kid anything because that kid got here um I wish I could have just told that kid that it was going to be okay. Yeah. Because that kid was, you remember what it's like being 16. You know the trauma you go through. That I just remember being very lonely and wanting to ask for help, but was too scared to. And um, 
I I wanted someone just to be there to tell me it was going to be okay. Uh, and I, if, if anybody I would have listened to at 16, tell me it was going to be okay. It would be the person I am today. That is the one person I know who I would listen to and trust because he would believe. See, yeah, yeah. Like I have the job I have now because of a dream I had when I was 17. That is insane. That mm-hmm. doesn't happen. And like, I, I got to see my dreams come true, which ne- never happens for anyone. Um, and uh, in my, in my family, uh, and, I have to remind myself of that constantly and remind myself that that 16 year old kid made a lot of stupid decisions, but that 16 year old kid still is inside of me somewhere. I I, I think I sweat out a good chunk of him. Uh, but he's still You're like frosty in the greenhouse no, over yeah. here right now, bro. <laughs> just no. your hat left on the I, I know, yeah, that's really all it is. <laughs> this podcast is going to be in the mic. <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> How do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> Don't smoke crack. Drink water. Listen to the Honeydew podcast. Subscribe on Patreon. We blow up Gotham City Hospital tonight at midnight, Batman. Cut that promo. <laughs> Dude, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for, for having everything. me, man. Uh, thank you please so much. Plug everything one more time. Troybonlive.com for all my road dates. Uh, I'm going to Toronto. I'm going to so many places. I don't even know how I'm, I'm on the road a lot. Um, I don't know when this is coming out. So check out my website, Troy Bond Live. First thing you see when you go on that website is just the splash of all my road dates. Um, and my social media, Troy Bond69 um, on TikTok and uh, Instagram, uh, Troy has Ebola on Twitter. Uh, you sign up for my mailing list on my website um, so you could find out if I'm, when I'm going to be in your hometown, you'll see that I'm going to be up there. Um, and my AOL account is white chocolate 96 yeah. at uh, aim.com. Is it still? Hit me up I thought it, that doesn't exist anymore. I, I, it exists if you believe in it. Is that right? It's right here. I just got to aim for the heart. Aim for the heart, bro. Yeah, baby. Uh, as always, RyanSickler.com. Ryan Sickler on all your social media. Come see me on tour. All tickets are available on my website at RyanSickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week. <laughs>